so we, we, this is love, eh? This isn't like some... Do it again. Okay, Shane Willard said. Okay, now we can go. Those on live stream. Can I have my bottle of water there, please, Kat? Those on live stream, we welcome you in the name of Jesus. We love ministering to, to the world. We're preaching the gospel to the world, aren't we just? Amen. I think, um, let's just ask the Lord to honor the word. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. Sure, you have a sense of humor, Father, by putting me up here. We give you the glory and the honor. We thank you, Father, that you use me. Because I know that when I stand here, there has to be a robe of anointing placed upon me because things can go south. And Lord, we just submit this word to you. We thank you that we come as servants. Nothing else, Father. All of you, glory to you. We come as servants, nothing else. And for this, we praise you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ian and Diane are no doubt he'll probably get this later when he wakes up. I'm sure he's sleeping now. Or otherwise, he's up and he's watching. What's Tony going to say? What's he going to say? <laughs> But uh, we just want to wish our own pastor and Pastor Diane, um, you know, lots of love as they go and do God's work around the world. They're going into America, they're in South Africa, and the work never stops. So good hand, and, you know, for, for our pa pastors. And I think I, I've, I'm just so blessed to be able to say I'm only standing here because of a good woman. Uh, come on. Catherine stands by me. She puts up with my nonsense. She tells me what I've done wrong. She, she puts me back on track. The wife, how many of you know that the Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. I thought that was the weakest thing I've ever found or interpretation until I studied it in the Hebrew. A good thing is a life saver. I've spoken about that before. So I've got a life saver and she saved my life many times. So, just a quick uh, uh, a brain shaker, a brain teaser. Are you ready for this? What kind of exercise do lazy people do? <laughs> Sleeping. That's not exercise. That's, that's slothful behavior. Come on. Diddly squats. I just thought I'd drop that in because of the Commonwealth Games. They do diddly squats. Isn't it true in life that when good people do nothing, when good people do nothing, evil prevails? You know that it's up to us to get out there and do something about what we need or need to be heard or do in the streets or in churches or places. If we don't do it, I'm afraid someone else is going to do it and you're going to lose your children, you're going to lose things in life. So, I just want us to play a video quickly. Just watch this video. When we're laying on our deathbed, you're not going to worry about how much money you had, how much power you had, how much prestige. You're going to see that that was all game, that that was all an illusion. The only thing that's going to matter is the impact you had on other people's lives. We are all on a separate journey. But the beautiful thing about our life here on this earth is at my funeral, they ain't going to talk about my success. They're going to talk about who Nick was and how Nick lived and how Nick loved and encouraged. Success is incredibly important, but even more important than success, it's having an impact. It's knowing you haven't walked the planet in vain. It's knowing that because you've been here, you've blessed lives, you've developed people, and you have made the world a better place. The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart. And 
and all that will be left of you is what was in your heart. Life is a mirror. And life gives us not what we want. Life gives us who we are. When you were born, you cried while the world rejoiced. Live your life in such a way that when you die, the world cries while you rejoice. Man, it doesn't matter how much money you've got. It doesn't matter who you are in life. You're all called to do something with your life. You can impact the neighbor. You can impact someone around you. You can do something that can stir up someone else's life, and you can change the face of this planet. I'll never forget that we had one youngster come into our house, and today that youngster is a sole winner in the schools and changes people's lives by the thousands. What is your core? What, are you, what, what purpose have you got in life? What's your destiny? You see, we're on a series called Success for Life. I can tell you this, brothers and sisters. If you don't get off yourself or get away from yourself or get caught up in yourself and move away from who you are and step out to be something that somebody else needs, you're just going to go through life and say, no one loves me. These people don't care for me. You're just going to end up saying, I don't know what, 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 what this house of God is, but I'm separated. I don't feel connected to these people. Well, that's because you caught up in yourself, my friend. Can I just speak the truth? It's not until you get up and do something for somebody who's dying, who's bleeding on the side of the street. I, I, I'm... I'm, I'm just reminded that we're heading off to go and, and, and preach the gospel in the streets. And on the court of, uh, corner of Bermuda Street there, I don't know what's happening, but I can feel the Holy Spirit coming upon me. I walked in there, I said, Lord, I feel dead, but I can feel the Holy Spirit coming on me. And, and I get up into Bermuda Street, and I'm riding my bike, and the traffic is just jammed, and it's packed. And so, fortunately, we have the cheek of riding a motorcycle between the traffic, and I pull right up to the top. And there's a cop bike parked in the middle of the street. And there's this gentleman running around like this. And the paramedics are there, but nobody's doing anything for this gentleman. So I shouted through my helmet to the paramedic and I said to him, Sir, what's the problem? Stop this guy, he's going to get hit by a car. And the paramedic looked at me and he said, uh, We don't quite know what to do. I said, sir, would you like me to park my bike and jump off and grab this dude? And he said, no, 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 no. The police won't like that. I said, well, do something about that. And the next thing, the paramedic's like, like I'm commissioning the whole thing, and he's off to go and stop this guy. And the next thing, people are out of their cars, and they grab this guy. When good people do nothing, people end up dead. Even if you're commissioned to do it. I guess I don't know if this is in my preaching or not. Well, let me tell you what happened on our outreach. We had some spectacular, some great testimonies that took us all to another level. You know, we're walking down the street, and um, Kat, myself, and John, uh, we circled the whole of Kirua um, uh, um, Lifesavers Club, and we came up a back alley, and nobody was in this alley, but one gentleman was standing like this on the rails, keeping security. And because we were obedient to God, I walked up, I could see uh, John look at me, and I could see Kat, uh, Kat, Kat had already picked up. Hang on a second, the boy's sword's drawn. Let me just step aside. And, and so she stepped aside and fired up the camera, and then walked away. Because he was uh, uh, of another nation. He, was, he, was, uh, he looked kind of Indian. He looked kind of, I don't know. I don't know what nationality. And so I stopped in front of him and I said to him, so what's your name? He said, my name's Saeed. I said, oh, Saeed, how are you? I said, if you die today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, do you know for absolutely sure where you're going? He looked at me and says, mm, I think I've got a, a, a good idea. 
I said, well, if you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are not going where you think you're going. So he said, oh, that's interesting. So I see, he says, I understand that Jesus is a prophet, just like Muhammad. I said, that's interesting, Saeed. I said, Jesus can't be a prophet like Muhammad. Because Muhammad died and never rose from the dead. But Jesus died and rose from the dead, my friend. That makes him the supreme of a Muhammad. And he went like this and he went, okay. I said, Muhammad was a great man. And we all come from the 12 tribes of Israel, including you, brother. But I said, why would you believe in a dead God when Jesus, who came up out of the grave, appeared to 500 people after his death and showed himself. Why are you witnessing or, or ministering to a dead God when my God is alive and historically proven? What job do you do, Saeed? He says, I'm an engineer. I said, that makes you a learned man. I said, why not get into history and look for the, the facts? And he said this. He said, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And he took the cross. And he confessed Jesus, not really knowing what he's done. And he made the confession after us. And then we walked away. And I thought, that's the end I'd hear from him. And you know what happened? Is the next thing, Sean and Megan, the Holy Spirit sends them up the same pathway. And they're standing there. Let me give you a visual. And Sahid is doing this. He's doing this, and he's in deep thought. And so Sean and Megan stop next to him, and they say to him, who gave you that? <laughs> and he says, he says, some guy by the name of Tony, but he's messed me up. <laughs> in a good way. And, and so we were just laughing about that, and they had a couple of words with that. And yeah is my Muslim brother, who is part of God's family, thinking intently about God's cross and about what this Jesus that I said rose from the dead and Muhammad is still missing. He's missing. He hasn't come forth. Lazarus at least came forth. If you're going to believe something, believe in Lazarus for goodness sake. You see, we stood around police officers, and, and, and on the second last night, we, we hooked up with five or six police, Leanne. Let me tell you about small Leanne. She came on the outreach, and she said, Ooh, Pastor, I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I'm scared of this. I said, Leanne, first of all, let's pray. I said, Jesus, Father, I said, Lord, we call for demon-possessed people today. We call, Father, that you bring in people that when we touch them, they're going to foam at the mouth. And she goes, oh my gosh, are you serious? <laughs> and so she says, what am I going to do? I said, I don't know. Just follow me. And I didn't give her two seconds to talk. The next thing we walk up to Borobi. His name's Borobi, hey? <laughs> Borobi. You see, Borobi's a soul winner. Hey? Let me just tell you something. So everybody's taking photos. So I said, so give me your camera. So we take a photo. I said, Leanne, minister to his wife. Kaboom, she's deep in it. And she goes, just excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am, if you died today or tomorrow, do you know for sure? And the woman says, no, I don't. She says, well, let's confirm that. Now, she's, now the boldness comes upon her. And she starts praying, kaboom, first soul one. And then the next thing, I've got Leanne and, uh, and, and, and Andrea with me. And they're walking, and we're walking down, and in the alleyway, there's a woman sitting on her own. She's frustrated, and she's eating. And I said, Leanne. Andrea, down the alleyway, quickly, catch that one. She's going to hell. <laughs> and we got photos of this. I don't know if we got any of these photos. But we got photos of this. And the two of them go down to her. Ma'am, are you fully aware that as you eat your dinner here, that you're sitting in an alleyway, that <laughs> there's a question we're going to ask. And they lead her to the Lord. They led her to the Lord. But these five cops, we stand in there. And, and I said, every time we, we, we arrived on site now, the one cop says to me, do you have permission here? 
Now, when you ask me, do I have permission? You're asking the wrong question. Because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof belongs to God. It doesn't belong to no legal system. Now, I respect the legal system. So I looked him straight in the eyes. I said, yes, sir, we have permission. And we began to preach the gospel. And so you know what happens is I'm standing around these cops, and now the boldness of God comes upon me. And many of our teams, they all minister to cops. And, and so I took out crosses. I said to the cops, hey, gentlemen, you guys, take our gift. It's free. The cop says, no, 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 no. We don't take these things. I said, sir, sir, listen to me. You might not take it, but a nuthead might come past your path. And you need to give him one of our crosses. And, and then every, every one of them took a cross and said, for sure, we'll take one. And they took the crosses. Seed sown. Seed sown. What's this going to do? When that police officer is sitting at the side of his bed with post-traumatic stress, and he looks at this cross and he says, God, if there's a way, lead me. What if I had done nothing? What if we never got out there and spoke the word? John Macro, I want to tell you something, came alive under the fire of the Holy Spirit. I, I went up to a guy in the wheelchair, and he like kind of outright said to me, no, I'm not interested. And I thought, whoops, Lord, this one slipped through the nets. John Macro comes in after me, and he says, no, he's not satisfied. And he sits with the guy, and he comes back to me, he says, Tony, I don't know what you did wrong there, brother. But this man accepted Jesus. He said, I just, he just didn't understand you. I said, I might have been full on, brother. I wanted to get him off the wheelchair. You see, our communication, our lives, our lives are living a successful life. What are you doing to live that successful life? What are you doing? You saw what happened up there. It's not how much money you've got. It's not how much money you're going to, to be remembered for. Because I can tell you something. There's this dude on television. He, he, he puts $2 in and he wins himself 600 and something million dollars. No one will remember that man in a year or two's time. Or maybe I would if he popped 20 million in my pocket. But no one will remember him down the line. But let me tell you something. The day that you die, you're going to remember or be remembered for who you helped in the byways, in the hospitals, in, in the prisons. What did Jesus say? You were there when I was sick in the hospital. You were there when I was in the streets wondering. See, when we walk in the streets, there's this young girl. She's got this like red hair. I mean, feisty, fiery red. And, and the Holy Spirit said, stop her. I stop her, but she's tattooed up to the hilt. And I said to her, gee, your hair is outstanding. It makes you look, now automatically I've won her over. It makes you look like you're on fire, man. I said, ma'am, I'm going to ask you a question quickly. She goes, yeah, sure. Where will you go if you drop dead now? Do you know for sure where you're going to be? And you know what? She turned to me and she said, you know, I've prayed and I've asked God for certain stuff, but I'm not sure. And I said, let's seal that right now in the main boulevard, in the main boulevard. People all around us. I said, let's seal that. The Word of God says, if you confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died and rose from the dead, you shall be saved. It doesn't say go to a church. You come to church to worship. The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. But church is out there. Church is at your neighbor. Church is where you sit and have coffee. That's church. This is the place of worship. And so she said, well, what do I do? I said, just say this after me. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you rose from the dead. And now, Lord, I am saved. I said, here's a cross for you. She looked at me and she said, thank you so much so much. I, I got to share one more testimony before I just cut into, should I just keep going? <laughs> I'll share one more testimony with you. We surrounded by a whole bunch of girls, Catherine, myself, and John Macro. And I noticed this one girl, she's got nose rings, she's got eye rings, she's got tattoos, she's cut her hair short, and she actually looks like a boy. Fact of the matter is, I thought she was a boy. 
And then next to Catherine, to Cat, is another girl. Delicate, dainty, gentle spirit, lovely girl. And then, I don't know, four or five others around us. And so I stop. And I, I'm, I'm like I said, I said, Lord, when you send me out, I want to get groups of people. I don't just want one. I want to challenge five, six, ten at a time. And so these girls are all standing around me. Now I've caught the attention of the tough one. And I said, girl, here's a question I want to ask each and every one of you. I'm going to ask you, 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 and you. Pay attention. It's the most important question you're ever going to be asked in your life. Now they're all like, they stop in slow motion on a lick on their ice cream. So I look at this little delicate one here and I said, let me ask you a question. If you die today, tomorrow, 10 years from now, 50 years from now, do you know for absolute sure where you're going to go? And this delicate one turns like us and tears start warming up in her eyes. Ask her. And she says, I'm going to hell. And I stopped there and I said, what? So her boyfriend turns and says, yeah, man, we're going to hell, man. And she's as bold as a lion, and she's not scared. I said, calm down, girl. Let me talk to this one. Who told you you're going to hell? She says, everybody tells, we, tells me we're going to hell because I'm a lesbian. The grace of God will hunt you down in dark places. It will take you in your cesspool of poison and disgust and vomit and will take you in your lesbian state. And will take you in your drugged up, messed up pit of horror. And will hunt you. And will show you his love. And we turned to, we said, you know what, darling? Don't ever believe the lies of man. You might be in sin today, but tomorrow you might be a different person. And Jesus loves you more than anything. And then the next thing, Kat's got her arms around her. And she's like, she's almost... I promise you, the only thing that stopped her from crying, and I think she did go into a bit of tears, is that Kath had her by her hand and she gave her a cross. And before we knew it, John Macro said, hold on a second. One for you, one for you, one for you, one for you, one for you. We love you guys. And they walked away and they said, this is awesome. Thank you for not judging us. We said, we never came to judge you. We came to win you to Christ. We came to win you. And that's how God works. I got on one of my photos, there's this young guy, and the Holy Spirit sends me up to him. He says, go minister to that boy, he's sitting down, but he's got a gold cross on him. And on the gold cross, he's got a statue of, or, or an, a, an impression of Christ hanging off the cross like, I mean, rock solid. He must have paid a couple of thousand dollars for this thing. And so the Holy Spirit says, minister to him. So I walk up to him, I said to him, how are you doing, sir? I said, that's an awesome cross you've got on you. He said, oh, man, it's cool. He says, my pastor told me I shouldn't be doing this and I shouldn't have this thing on because it's idolism. I said, tell your pastor to go jump in the lake, brother. <laughs> so I put condemnation on a man. I said, what do you do? He says, well, we're looking for a church. <laughs> my pastor chased me out because I'm into idolism. I said, mate, bring all your idols to me. <laughs> we'll coach you through them slowly but with love. His name was Tino. So I said, Tino, have you, re have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? He says, I'm Catholic, mate. I said, I don't care what you are. I was raised in the Catholic church. Jesus didn't come and say you must be put into a church and, and be a Methodist or, a or, or, or be in Catholic Catholicism or, or be in any form of, of ministry of whatsoever. He said this, you must be born again. And so I said, Tina, all you've got to do is confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's got nothing to do with religion. And then you shall be saved. He said, man, I'm ready. I give him a cross in his hands. I said, brother, let's pray. He, look, he looks down like us and he goes, pray. And I said, say this after me. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's not about the idols, the trash, the clothing, the jewelry. It's not about any of that. It's about you as my Lord and Savior. And he says, and I receive you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And he jumps up. He puts his arms around me. He says, thank you, mate, man. Thank you so much. 
I appreciate what you've done. He says, my mother's just in the chiropractor. When she comes here, I'm going to pray with her. And not only am I going to pray with her, I'm coming to your church. And we gave him the cards. We gave him the connect cards. We gave him the heritage faith card. We gave him the sinner's card. We gave him the cross. But this oak is so fired up with seed that he doesn't even, he probably ran away there and started preaching the gospel. And while I'm busy with Tina, Leanne is busy with three people on the, on the, on the steps and they gave their life to the Lord on her own. She doesn't even need us anymore. Wow. So what is prosperity? What is prosperity? What did that video show you? What is success in life? And have you reached success? I count everything that I do as nothing but done. But for that one person that we have taken and put our arms around and shown the glory of God, the love of God. You know, when I landed in Australia, people started to say to me, you don't know Australia. You don't know Australia, people. You, you, Tony, Australia works different to the rest of the world. <laughs> Australia is people. People have spirits and souls. When God connects, spirit and soul stands to attention to the King of Kings. Those that reject Him will have the opportunity again. That's how merciful God is. He will hunt you down. He will look for you in the dark places. So they told me, you can't do these things in Australia. I said, what? And Sean will tell you. I don't wait for the opportunity. I don't even wait for the voice of fear. They're still talking to me and I'm gone. So like in the middle of a conversation, Sean was saying, Dad, what happened? <laughs> I walked off because the Holy Spirit said, there's five. We jumped into them. And then I came back. I said, sorry, Shawnee, what did you say? Isn't that right? I said, well, we're, we're, we're praying. We're going to, you know, we're just going to get going. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit stopped me. And the son received Christ and the father took the cross and he said, I'll go home and think about this. I just love that. So what's your success in life? You know, we've we got to stop and think about what brings us success. Tell me, uh, keep, keep time, eh? I've only got five minutes left. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay, let's talk about two things that destroy success in life. Your faith, your faith, and your words. You see, when they told me, you can't say these things in Australia. I'll never forget when we landed in Australia the first year. Some dude put a microphone on the corner and started screaming at the people. Jesus saves. And he was arrested. <laughs> and he was arrested. And then I thought to myself, what is this fool doing? Jesus didn't even do that. Jesus didn't stand on the street corner and say, you will go to hell. No. He went up to the Sanhedrin and he broke bread and he said, let's share the bread. Isn't that true? Now, he did a couple of crazy things like turning tables upside down and smacking them and telling them they're nothing but filthy, dirty rags. They're white on the outside and poison on the inside. But two things that destroy. One of them was your words. And so they said to me, you can't come and preach the gospel like you do in Africa. I said, why not? So when we approached our leaders and we said, what are we going to do when... Uh, when we go and preach the gospel in Australia, what, what should we do? And we sought counsel on this. And eventually, when I went to the meetings, this is what happened in the meetings. You must belong to this organization and this committee. You must appear to this prayer meeting, and you must go for that dinner. And that's wonderful, because they've got structure. But I said, for chariots of light, what shall we do? You know what the Lord said? Get arrested. Get out there. Get arrested. Go out there in the streets. Make yourself known. Get, speak the gospel to the poor. Spread the word. Get arrested. So I just ran around seeing who's going to arrest me first, and none of the cops would arrest me. But you know what the Lord said? I love what, Sin came with us one night, Sin. 
seen, he's, a, he's an on fire Christian. He came with his farmer's hat. And, and I thought, ooh, yes, we just got this guy that's coming in here. And you know what he says? He said, Tony, then nobody going to take my ground. He said, every step that, that, that the Lord has given me is my ground to take. He said, I'm not going to give my ground to nobody. And I thought about that, and I said, I'm in, brother. I'm standing with you. I'm taking my ground. You know what he said? He declared. He spoke with his mouth. He believed with his heart, and he stepped into a ground. The next thing, he was just winning souls. You know what he did afterwards? He came up to me. He says, you know what, Tony? Three years ago, I was stone cold bankrupt. He says, today I've got enough money to do so many things. Three years later. I said, what is it, Tim? He says, I realize that I'm now a steward to God's money. And he says, you know something? You guys are doing all such a fantastic job. I'm going to shout to you your dinner. How awesome is that? And this guy, he shouted us all our dinner. God just took care of us. I think we have how many? Eight of us? Nine of us? He just paid the bill. He said, you guys have excited me, man. I'm going home to, to do more fire. I'm going to win souls on sight. Your words. What are you saying? What are you saying that's destroying the works that God's doing in your life? And I've got a whole sermon prepared here, but I believe God wanted you to catch something. You see, what is your success? And how do you measure your success? By what faith do you move in? And what do you say over the faith that God has given you? You, you, you remember the other day at Southport Yacht Club, the owner of Google just uh, pulled in with his backyard toy. $80 million yacht. Sorry, $800 million yacht. $800 million yacht. It's the biggest yacht that stood in the car park there, or in the pool. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All the super yachts look like popcorn next to it. <laughs> and this guy from Google, he's renting the yacht out for one day at $80,000. One day. How do you measure your success? See, I measure my success in two ways. How successful I was with my family and how successful I was with God's family. Those two things I count as the most two valuable things on the face of the earth. And so if I win a soul, I am rewarded in accordance to that person I have won. You might not be able to win a soul, but you certainly can cook you certainly can have a cup of coffee. Isn't that true? And so by the words of our mouth, we decreed and declared that Australia will be saved. And you know what the Lord said to me? He says, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm just getting you and your teams ready for the great outpouring. And let me tell you something. I was sent into Australia for the mighty end time revival. I didn't come into Australia for the fun of it. And I'm standing in the streets and, you know, I said, Lord, we've won one soul. All heaven rejoices. There was a hundred and something souls and so many more ministered to. If heaven was having a rave, <laughs> I can imagine God on the Boom, boom. Party, boys. The souls are coming in. Come on, I'm just thinking like I used to when I was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? All of heaven rejoices when you come out of your comfort zone and you speak to one person and tell them about the love of Jesus. What a wonderful service we've just had. We've experienced the presence of God. And I know His presence, and I know Him personally. And I want to ask if you've been watching this, do you know Jesus personally? I want to invite you to become a part of the family of God. I'd love to ask you to pray with us. If you've watched the service, and you say, but you know what, I don't know Jesus, but I would love to know Him. This prayer is for you. Salvation is now. Don't put it off. Don't leave it. Come along with me and pray this with me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take care of me, Lord. Wash me clean of my sins. 
Bring me into your family, Lord. Make me the head and not the tail. Take me from darkness into light, from sickness into health. Thank you, Jesus. You paid the price that I may have eternal life with you and the Father and the Holy Spirit. But more than that, I can live a successful life here on earth. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you prayed that and, and you'd like to, we'd love to be able to actually send you some resources. If you would like that, please contact us via the phone or email. We'd love to get some things into your hand. And if you're in the local area, we'd love for you to join us for our next Sunday service. We're open. All are welcome. God bless. And if you prayed that, welcome to the family.